Am. Am. SAT gods, tell me what will be on the August SAT. Um, good. Hey everyone, Sebastian here. I'm just back from communing with SAT gods, and they've given me three question types that will be on the August SAT. Or maybe I just have done a lot of it research on past tests or something like that. But either way, I have three questions that I feel confident will be on the August SAT. So study these and know them. So you'll have three hard questions in the bag. And if they don't show up on the test, come back and yell at me in the comments. But let's try these out. I'll show you how to do them. So you'll be ready in August. Circle R and circle S intersect at point A. Point A is at 6 comma 8. Circle S has a center at 1120. And this point makes a diameter with point A for circle R. If the difference between the area of circle S and circle R is K pi square units, what is K? So the center is at 1120 for circle S. And that, along with 6, 8, makes a diameter for circle R. So we can find the radius for circle S, and that would give us the area. And that radius is circle R's diameter. So we divide it by 2 to find its radius, and that will give us its area. And then we'll subtract to find k. So if we drew out a version, right? We'd have something like boom, boom, six comma eight up here, and then we're going to be at five eleven would maybe be, or eleven twenty would maybe be around here. This is a terrible drawing, but it gives us the idea. So we're going to have one circle that's like that, and then another circle that goes like that. So the radius we find through distance formula. So let's do distance formula and then we will do half of that for circle R. So distance formula is, I'll put it up here, x1 minus x2 in parentheses squared plus y1 minus y2 in parentheses squared. It's derived from Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to do 11 minus 6 squared plus 20 minus 8 squared. That's going to give us 5 squared plus 12 squared. If you know the 5, 12, 13 triangle, you probably already know what you're going to get. That will be 25 plus 144 which equals root 169, which equals 13. So that is the radius for circle S. So S is going to equal 13 squared pi. R will equal 13 over 2 squared pi. I'm going to erase this little drawing. So S equals 169 pi r will equal 169 over 4 pi so we'll subtract 169 minus 169 over 4 and that will equal 507 over 4 or 126.75 so let me know how you did that one let me know how you felt about it but this is the best way to do it i know it's hard to visualize it feels abstract at first but once you draw it out and picture it and understand the relationship between their sizes you'll be golden so we have this equation here px plus 2 parentheses 3x squared minus qx plus 6 equals 15x cubed minus 4x squared plus 26x plus 12. The equation above is true for all x values, where p and q are constants. What is the value of p, q? Okay, so what you need to do is FOIL this out. It's not technically FOILing, I guess, because there's a middle part here. But distribute it out, and then see how everything lines up. The first part, the px times the 3x squared, gives you the 15x cubed. So we can find p pretty quickly. It's like this px plus 2. This one's a common one that I go over with students because it's not too bad, but it is tricky the first couple of times you see it. So px times 3 equals 15x cubed. 
So let's do that. Px times 3x squared equals 15x cubed. Divide by 3x cubed. So we have 3x cubed p equals 15x cubed. Divide by 3x cubed p equals 5. Okay, so that part is done. Let's rewrite the equation now with p equaling 5. I'll put that up here as a reminder. So we'll have now 5x plus 2 times 3x squared minus qx plus 6. So 5x times 3x squared will be 15x squared. 5x times negative qx will be negative 5 qx squared. 5x times 6 is 30x. Then we'll do 2 times 3x squared, so that's going to be, I'm going to line it up with the x squared, you'll see why in a second, 6x squared. 2 times negative qx will become negative 2qx, and 2 times 6 is 12, which we got there. So those are already clean. Now, we could do it two ways. So I'll do the squareds together first, and then I'll do the other one to see how you could have done it either way. So I have negative 5qx squared plus 6x squared equals the negative 4x squared here. So we'll subtract negative 6x squared from both sides. And honestly, we could eliminate the x squareds because they're all there anyway, but I'll just keep them in for one last step. So negative 10x squared, and then we divide by negative 5x squared, and q equals 2. If you did it with the x's, it would also work. We could do 30x minus 2qx equals positive 26x. And x's can't, we subtract 30x, so we get negative, let's forget about the x's, negative 2q equals negative 4q equals 2. Either one would work. You just have to keep the degrees consistent. Squares go with squares, singles go with singles, cubes go with cubes. And then we have p equals 5, q equals 2. So p equals 5, q equals 2. So pq equals 5, parentheses 2. That equals 10. Okay, not too bad at all, I think. All right, so this is my last prediction and a pretty straightforward but also kind of tricky word problem involving rates. A mod's pool fills itself at a rate of g gallons per minute. It starts with 100 gallons in the pool. After two hours of filling, the number of gallons in the pool was 1540, and it was 10% full at this time. If the pool continues to fill itself at the same rate, how long in minutes will it take for the pool to get full, counting the time that's already passed? So we started with 100 gallons, and it fills itself two hours of filling. So it's asking for it in minutes, though. So let's convert two hours to minutes. Minutes, OK. Plus 120. We don't need to use G, but let's use G, because that's what they give us, equals 1540. So let's find G. And that will be 120 G equals 1440. Now divide by 120. And it's basically like 144 divided by 12. So G equals 12. That's 12 gallons per minute. Pretty fast, I think. So it's 10% full at 1540. So 10 over 100 equals 1540 over X x equals 1 15,400 you don't need to do that step but i'm going to do it what people make the mistake of doing is they'll be like oh it's 10 percent full after this amount of time so it'll just be 10 times as long it'll be 20 hours and convert to minutes but we started with 100 gallons so that's going to cancel out part of the time okay so now we have 15,400 let's see how long it takes us to get there so let's take away the 100 gallons that were already used to find how much it was filling in total 
and then divide that by, so that'd be 15,300. Let's divide that by 12. And that will give us the amount of time in minutes that it took to fill the pool. And that will give us 1,275 minutes. All right, so if you have questions on this one or any of the other ones I've done, let me know. I'd be happy to help you. If there's other types of questions you want me to cover or you want me to just answer in the comments, I'm always thrilled to do that. I love it. So I hope you're all preparing nice and steady. It's summer. Enjoy the summer. Have fun. You can do a little bit of studying, but don't make it your whole life. If you're studying a little bit every day, you're already doing a lot better than a lot of people. So I hope it's sunny where you are, but if it's raining, you know what I'm going to say. I hope it's cleaning your windows and watering your plants. Bye.